Hello, I'm Ryan Turner, your registered dietitian, and I'm bringing heart health to you right now. I was recently reminded that I actually am a published author in Dyslipidemia by Myerson. Check me out in chapter six in Lifestyle Modifications. But along with that, I wanted to make sure that you have an understanding of how to improve your cholesterol and your overall heart health. So you're gonna see things like your total cholesterol, you're gonna see triglycerides, your LDL, your HDL. What I want you to remember right now is that your total cholesterol definitely means something, but it's more important that you actually break down what makes up your total cholesterol. And that's gonna be things just like your triglycerides are gonna be there. And triglycerides is like the actual stuff that you can see kind of like floating around. It's like if you see a rendering of an artery and you see like the yellow stuff around the walls, like that's closer to what the triglyceride's gonna be. When you end up looking at things like your HDL and your LDL, how do you know the difference between these? I want you to think about the HDL, which is the good cholesterol, and really it's not truly cholesterol. HDL is something you wanna keep high. H for HDL, or high for H rather. And so HDL is gonna be an actual thing that goes into your body, more or less, and it actually pulls out cholesterol, brings it back to the liver, and then it ends up breaking it down. If you look at your LDL, your LDL is gonna be something that's considered your bad cholesterol. L, you wanna keep it low, right? So the good stuff you wanna keep high, the bad stuff you wanna keep low. Just remember it that way. So HDL, good, LDL, bad. But I want you to understand how you can actually change things like those numbers, increase the good cholesterol, reduce the bad cholesterol, and you can be on your, on your way to better heart health. Three things you can do with your nutrition to make sure that you are gonna be more protected. The number one thing you can do is choose not to smoke. Just across the board in anything, but really in heart health and cholesterol, smoking is gonna be one thing that you can choose not to do, or you can go through a smoking cessation program, just quit smoking altogether, and that is just gonna improve you right there. But three nutrition-focused ideas that you can kind of take right now. Number one, it's gonna be fiber. One of my favorite topics to always talk about. Now fiber, there's gonna be two different kinds of fiber. There's soluble and there's insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is gonna be like the kind of fiber in food, the strands of fiber that's like yarn, compared to the, the insoluble fiber that's kind of like the strands of fiber that's gonna be more like metal. And so when you end up eating more of these soluble fibers, like those yarn fibers and things like carrots and Brussels sprouts and broccoli and apricots and mango and berries, all of those things are gonna get into your stomach and it's gonna absorb water, it's gonna absorb acids and it's going to actually turn into a gel and move slower through your intestine. But when it gets by the liver, it actually pulls things like those triglycerides and the LDL out so we can lower those numbers naturally just like that. So when we end up talking about eating your fruits and vegetables, we're not just BSing you and saying it just to say it, but it can actually improve your overall heart health by reducing triglycerides and your LDL specifically. Number two, you wanna think about controlling your blood sugar. Whenever we're eating foods that actually just increase our blood sugar, send it to the roof, this is gonna be something that actually supports the synthesis, the creation of things like our LDL and also triglycerides. So if we can do things that control our blood sugar, it's gonna support us. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to combine your foods. So if you decide to eat something like a carbohydrate, a starch, sugar, anything at all, now, I'm not kind of telling you to have anything at this point, but I am saying if you end up having a food that brings up your blood sugar, eat it with foods that don't bring up your blood sugar. So things like fat and also things that have protein, those are gonna help reduce that blood sugar spike and that's gonna end up helping you out. So whenever you're creating a meal, make sure that I'm not gonna use the word balanced, but I'm gonna say make sure you're combining your foods and make sure that whenever you're eating any type of carbohydrate, great things for energy, that you also combine some sort of protein and produce or protein and fiber. And that's gonna help support better blood sugar control. Three, I wanna make sure that you know this. So I'm gonna ask you to increase the amount of omega-3 within your diet. Now, omega-3 is a very beneficial fat. It's actually linked to just increasing things like your HDL, your good cholesterol. That we see HDL increasing when we're eating about two servings of fish, two five ounce servings of fish. Think about your cell phone if you're holding that right now. Your cell phone is close to like a three to four ounce portion of say a, a really thin um, kind of cut of fish. So a little bit bigger than your cell phone. But if you can eat at least two a week, it's good. So those are the three things that you can do right now to improve your heart health. And number one, I'm gonna tell you again, is going to be making sure that you're eating more of your soluble fiber. I always ask my clients to follow the two, four, one rule. 
two fruits, four handfuls of non-starchy vegetables, and at least one meal with beans, oats, or potato. Number two, I mentioned was combining foods. Whenever you're having some kind of starch, pasta, rice, potato, whatever you're gonna be having, I want you to have that food, but combine it with something that's gonna control your blood sugar and blunt that spike. So things just like protein and fat and fiber that are going to help do that. And number three, I mentioned omega-3. Make sure that you're eating fish at least two times a week, about five ounces the size of your cell phone or a little larger. At least two times a week would end up helping your cholesterol out a ton, so make sure you're doing it. And I'm gonna throw one more out at you, and this is a surprising one. It's actually whey protein. So studies coming out from, I believe it was Australia. This, may, this was in 2010, so it's a while ago. But looking at obese and overweight subjects, they went 12 weeks. They actually supplemented their diet with either whey or casein, both coming from dairy. But they took it as a supplement. And they found that the, uh, the segment of the study that was actually taking whey, that they reduced their overall LDL cholesterol versus the group that only took the casein. So if you are looking to reduce your cholesterol and you're taking that already, I think it's definitely something that you can be confident can support a lower LDL level. I will end this by saying something else. If you are a client of mine or you are someone looking to change your cholesterol and you need one way that you can do it without getting too specific, if you have high cholesterol and you are overweight or you are obese, however you want to define that, if you have weight to lose and you lose 5% of your starting weight right now, you can argue almost any weight, but if you lose 5% of your starting weight, you will start to reduce your cholesterol, send it in the right direction, and you will be a healthier person altogether. So you can do that no matter how you do it, with these tips or without these tips. But I hope that gives you a little bit of uh, clarity. I hope that ends up, ends up supporting you here and just gives you some help to keep moving forward, all right? Let me know if you have questions. I'm always here to help. Take care.